Hello and welcome back to Lady Sustain Reads. I'm Beatrice and today I'm just bringing you a quick video which is going to be my TBR and recommendations for Jane Austen July. Hopefully I'll be able to make um, maybe two or three um, Jane Austen related videos which are my usual videos but um, more specifically I'll make them uh, to participate in uh, Jane Austen July so I'll try to uh, make videos based on some of the challenges of Jane Austen July. Uh, now as I said in my last video I have a newborn now so I'm not sure how much time I have to complete all of the seven challenges of Jane Austen July. However, I will do my best and today I thought I would um, tell you about the books and films that I'm really excited to read and watch this July and hopefully give you some recommendations of um, books by Jane Austen and about Jane Austen that I really like and I think you should read too. So there are seven challenges this year. I will link below uh, in the description the hosts of uh, the challenge, uh, Marissa and Claudia um, and Katie. And let's just get straight into it. Just a quick video for today. So the first challenge is to read one of Jane Austen's six main novels. And for this challenge, um, I've reread her novels many times. I don't know if I'll have time to... Um, reread one of her novels this July but if I do it will definitely be Persuasion because the film adaptation, the Netflix film adaptation of Persuasion is coming out in a few days time uh, so I would like to have reread Persuasion before watching it just so it's fresh in my mind. It's also a very short book and if you are relatively new to Jane Austen have you, and you've only read say Pride and Prejudice I think Persuasion is a great next um, novel to read. It's very different from Pride and Prejudice which shows her range so I think um, it really is a good place um, to expand your reading of Austen if you haven't um, read much Austen so far. Uh, for my second challenge, uh, the second challenge is to read something other than her six main novels and um, I know that lots of people are reading Lady Susan this year because Lady Susan is brilliant and there's also a really good film adaptation which is confusingly called Love and Friendship but it's actually an adaptation of Lady Susan and it's directed and written by Whit Stillman. It really is excellent. So uh, that's a great idea to read Lady Susan for the second challenge. How about this year? I think I'm just going to reread Jane Austen's Prayers, which is something that I never hear people talking about um, or writing about, but in fact, they're quite beautiful. I believe there are only three of them, uh, but they're quite long and um, they're just they're just very beautiful to read. They're lovely to read in the evening uh, before bedtime uh, to relax. So I think I will reread her prayers and um, just, um, just enjoy uh, reading something so different from her usual work. Uh, for the third challenge, um, it's to read a non-fiction book about Jane Austen or about her time. And for this one, I have a couple of options. There is a book that I'm already reading at the moment, which I am really enjoying, and it's Jane Austen and the Clergy by Irene Collins. This is my second Irene Collins book that I read. She was a historian and she wrote a biography of Jane Austen, which I also really recommend, um, called Jane Austen, the Parson's Daughter. I actually have a video review of that on my channel, which I will link down below. Um, that was an excellent biography of Jane Austen. I really enjoyed it and this uh, book, Jane Austen and the Clergy, focuses still on her life but it's more to do with um, Church of England clergy in Jane Austen's time and it's using all this information, this historical information about um, the clergy in Jane Austen's time to um, really illuminate some of the aspects of her novels. It's an extremely well-researched, easy to read book. Um, it's academic, but very accessible. So I would highly recommend it. Um, once I finish that book, if I have time, I would really like to read Paula Burns, um, the, Genius of, of, the Genius of Jane Austen, which I think all of the Jane Austen July hosts have also recommended on their TBRs. I've been meaning to read this book for a long time it's supposed to be about Jane Austen and the theatre and why her novels work so well as film or TV adaptations. And I think that sounds fascinating. So if I have time, I will definitely read that one as well. Um, the fourth challenge is the one I will struggle with the most, I think. It's to read a retelling of one of Austen's novels or a historical fiction book set in her time. Now, um, this might be the challenge that I don't get to, however if I do, for a retelling, I've only read one that I enjoyed and that was P.D. James's Death Comes to Pemberley from a few years ago. And I think 
I enjoyed it because it's a detective fiction book, essentially. It's, it's a mystery. Um, and uh, that's a genre that I always really enjoy. So I'm, I'm a huge Agatha Christie, uh, Dorothy L. Sayers fan. So I think that's why I enjoyed P.D. James's um, retelling of Pride and Prejudice. So if you didn't know, it's a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, except for it's set um, a few years after Pride and Prejudice. So I guess technically it's a sequel and uh, there's a murder and then um, the characters from Pride and Prejudice have to solve the murder, essentially. Um, it's really charming. There's a great, I think, BBC adaptation from 2013 um, that um, you should definitely watch. Uh, in fact, it might be one of my recommendations later. So that's really good. But that's the only retelling that I've ever enjoyed. There is one that's on my radar, which is... Um, Lucy Worsley's The Austin Girls. Lucy Worsley is a historian and she's done a bunch of really fun TV documentaries and she um, is has been writing this series of um, historical fiction books for children. Um, I think one of them is about Queen Victoria and she's got this new one out which is a, I think some kind of, um, again, detective fiction book, um, but with Jane Austen and I think her nieces as characters um, and I really enjoy children's fiction so if I can get to this one I have a copy and I would like to uh, give it a go. Um, my other option in terms of historical fiction, now I'm not a huge historical fiction person however Claudia from um, the Spencer's Library, one of the hosts, actually pointed out that a lot of Victorian literature is set in the Regency era which is true and I'd forgotten about that so I might be cheeky and do what she's going to do, which is to um, slightly bend the rules of the challenge, although I guess technically it's not really bending them because it is historical fiction, and I might try to read some Victorian literature set in the Romantic um, era, set in the Regency era. Uh, for example, Jane Eyre would be one of those novels. I've read Jane Eyre a bunch of times, so I might not reread that one, um, but I might read something else by the Ronda sisters, um, or I might read something by George Eliot. I haven't decided yet, so I will update you on that later. Uh, now for the last three challenges, uh, the fifth challenge is to read something by a contemporary of Jane Austen, and for this one I have a few options. I've been meaning to reread Mary Wollstonecraft's um, Vindication of the Rights of Woman for a long time. I read this years ago and um, if you didn't know it's um, a treatise that is often considered to be um, one of the first works of um, um, feminist thought. Um, it's from the late 18th century. It was written by Mary Wollstonecraft who was Mary Shelley's mother and I think this is actually a really interesting text to reread because I think it's often misunderstood and I think people often read it and kind of twist it to suit their agenda, if that makes sense, and often forget about certain aspects of Wollstonecraft's thought that were very important to her. Um, and in fact, I still need to make this video about um, Mary Wollstonecraft, um, parenthood and Aristotelian virtue uh, that I've been meaning to make for a long time. I will get to that at some point. Um, but yeah, I think it would be really interesting to reread a uh, vindication and um, think some more about um, the ways in which Mary Wollstonecraft is not just a feminist, but she's also a very particular kind of feminist. She's someone who pays so much attention to virtue ethics. I think it would be really interesting to um, to really think about that while rereading uh, a vindication. Uh, my other option, which is completely different, <laughs> it's not um, a work of um, um, philosophy or uh, political thought or anything like that. Poetry. Uh, of course, all the romantic poets were writing during Jane Austen's lifetime and I've been uh, meaning to reread some Keats for a long time, so I might get to that. That's my other option. The last two challenges are viewing challenges or watching challenges. The sixth one is to watch a direct screen adaptation of Jane Austen's, um, one of Jane Austen's works. And for this one, of course, I'm going to watch the new Persuasion adaptation once it comes out. I think it's coming out on the 15th of July on Netflix. Um, so I'm going to be watching that and I will definitely make a video review of it. I'm very excited about it. Um, I'm skeptical, but I'm open to changing my mind if it turns out to be a good film. And in terms of recommendation, I really, really enjoyed um, Autumn de Wilde's 2020 Emma. I know that some people um, will always prefer the 2009 adaptation of Emma. I think that was a BBC adaptation, a TV adaptation, um, 
which was excellent. However, I think the film really catches um, the humour in, in Austen's Emma so well, so I would highly recommend uh, that film. And of course, uh, my other favourite Jane Austen adaptation is the BBC Pride and Prejudice from the 90s with Colin Firth and Jennifer Ely, the classic, um, but it never gets old. It's really, really good. So those are probably my two favourite Austen adaptations. Um, so go and watch those ones and then watch the new Persuasion if you have read Persuasion before. And the last challenge is to watch a modern adaptation, a modern screen adaptation of one of Austen's works. Um, and for this one, my favourite one is probably a 2013 film called Austin Land, which is very goofy. It's very silly. It's about this woman who's obsessed with Jane Austen and goes to some kind of um, retreat slash experience um, uh, destination holiday in England um, at this manor house or th this really f beautiful fancy house and um, where everyone pretends to live like they are in Regency England and I know the premise sounds very silly and it is a very silly film but it's very very fun um, it's very charming uh, and I think I think if you don't take it too seriously it's very enjoyable to watch I know lots of people also enjoy Lost in Austin which um, is a TV miniseries I think from sometime around 2008 about a woman who ends up going back in time to Jane Austen's time but she's actually trapped in Pride and Prejudice if that makes sense so the the, the people that she meets are the characters from Pride and Prejudice. I didn't enjoy that one as much but it is still quite a fun one so you go ahead and watch that one if you like. Uh, I'm just remembering another recommendation for a direct film adaptation would be the film I mentioned earlier which is Whit Stillman's Love and Friendship which again confusingly is actually an adaptation of Lady Susan. There is um, a story from Jane Austen's Juvenilia called Love and Friendship but that's something completely different. It doesn't have anything to do with Lady Susan. Um, and yes the, the film Love and Friendship is excellent. It's from a few years ago. It's so funny. Um, it's such a great adaptation of Lady Susan. I would highly recommend that one. Uh, now, in the comments below, if you have any more suggestions for me, especially um, of any good Jane Austen retellings, because I tend to struggle with those ones. I, I tend to find it hard to find ones that I like. So any Jane Austen retellings that you really enjoyed, or any modern adaptations of Jane Austen's novels that you really enjoyed. I would like some more recommendations. And I think I'll wrap up for today because um, I need to go out and entertain my, my baby boy. Uh, and I'm really excited for Jane Austen July. And uh, yeah, tell me in the comments below what you will be reading and watching. And hopefully I will see you next week for another Jane Austen related video. Thank you for watching and bye.